Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor, and we're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. FFRF is the largest atheist agnostic free thought membership association in North America, and we work to keep church and state separate. You can join us today at FFRF.org. Our guest today is Lucian Greaves. Lucian is a Harvard graduate who co-founded a very interesting group. The group is known as the Satanic Temple. He founded the group in 2012. So it's very nice to have you with us here today, Lucian. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So our first question to you is, is the Satanic Temple satanic or is it satiric? Well, we're a satanic group that uses satire as a tactic to underscore certain disparities in how different or groups and religions, organizations are treated, uh, how religion is treated as a, as a privileged class over non-religious organizations, and how that really kind of conflicts with our fundamental founding principles of a secular constitutional government. So, Lu Lucian, are you an atheist? I am, and we argue for the legitimacy of non-theistic religion. Our feeling is that you can't, in a pluralistic society, privilege superstition over non-superstition. So if you have this kind of cultural identity, this uh, set of ethics and beliefs, and you've organized your life around those things, that is, for all intents and purposes, your religion. And if you're going to allow any privileges and exemptions based upon deeply held belief and religious principle, you have to extend those arguments, uh, the availability of those arguments to be made for privilege and exemption to non-believers as well. And to the United States system, uh, uh, First Amendment. When I first heard the phrase Satanic Temple, I thought Church of Satan. What's the difference? Oh, we're, we're very different from the Church of Satan. The Church of Satan was founded by Anton LaVey in the 60s. Anton LaVey described it as Ayn Rand with religious trappings. Um, <laughs> they're ostensibly non-theistic in the way that they don't believe in a personal Satan, but they still do believe in magic and espouse all kinds of pseudoscientific beliefs, including one of social Darwinism. So there's nothing superstitious or supernatural in the Satanic Temple? No, we actively fight against pseudoscience and superstition, and to us that uh, the, the idea of redeeming the name of Satan, e even on a symbolic, metaphorical level, uh, carries with it a lot of, a lot of meaning, a, a, lot, a lot that's worth fighting for. We're very aware of the satanic panic of the 1980s and the 1990s, and a lot of innocent people went to prison on accusations of Satanism. Uh, in the hallowed halls of our own judicial system, we found uh, outright supernatural claims being taken seriously on the evidence of recovered memory therapy. And we find these kinds of practices still being engaged in today to kind of derive evidence or used as therapeutic techniques that cause people to, uh, to degenerate into crippling delusions. And um, to that end, we, we we fight very actively against pseudoscience and for mental health care reform. So when you talk also about redeeming Satan, um, there were in the 19th century a lot of journals where there was one called Lucifer the Light Bearer, are you familiar with that? Yeah. Where um, the free thought community was actually saying, uh, y using this as a metaphor. Yeah, there was uh, socialist movements, women's rights movements, and they would invoke the name of Satan and it made a kind of intuitive sense. Uh, after the Enlightenment, people had to revise their thinking about what was morally correct and what was proper, and the monarchical system kind of fell apart, and people uh, started thinking in terms of liberation away from feudalistic societies. And even a non-theistic metaphorical religion can make a lot of commentary about that kind of fundamental way of organizing this mythic framework uh, by which we kind of uh, contextualize our lives, and that's what that's what Satanism does. Satanism as a metaphor for rebellion against tyranny. And I think there's a, a, a lot of quotes. I think remember Mark Twain saying, "We never hear Satan's side of the story." Of course, mm. letters from the earth. Well, the because whole thing the was based on that. The word Lucifer literally means light bearer, a person who bears the light, like loose and then fairy to carry to bear. So Lucifer can be a compliment. Well, th there's this. 
the question is, is what, what do you view as the ultimate evil? The, there's some people who say that if you venerate this satanic character, you're obviously, uh, you're worshiping cruelty, evil, depravity, all those types of things. And I think that that idea comes in order to uphold the, the inverse, which is that the, uh, the Judeo-Christian religions have a stronghold on what is morally correct and proper. And to call that into question at all, of course, when you feel that uh, moral authority is, is taken from one divine tyrant, um, then the Satan character becomes the ultimate evil. When it, the ultimate source of goodness comes from this one character in your religious text, then, uh, then everything embodied in, in the so-called opposite is, is going to be evil, including the quest for knowledge, the quest for personal autonomy and liberation, and all these kinds of other higher ideals that we strive for. So Lucian, um, the Satanic Temple has been very active on the state church front, and we have run into you very early, and we have done some things together. For example, um, FFRF and uh, the Satanic Temple had to sue Franklin County, Indiana, because our displays were being censored when they allowed a nativity scene up in December. We won that case, by the way. But right. and some, there's been some other things well, we've Florida, done together. Florida, the Orlando school, with right. your with your coloring book, <laughs> yeah, the absolutely. school put in that was really cute. Now that was when they were allowing uh, so-called passive distribution of of Christian Bibles, and when we tried to put our literature in, a lot of it was censored, and then. Um, we sort of uh, uh, won the right to do that. And when you came in and said, well, hey, we want to put our coloring books in the schools, they closed the whole forum. <laughs> Great, that's what we wanted. But I have to say, the Satanic Temple coloring book has to be one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was funny. I was speaking to uh, one of the representatives from the Freedom From Religion Foundation when, uh, when it was asked by us if we had something we could give out for passive distribution. And we were advised that our whatever literature we had we would put out uh, could be as critical as it wanted to be of, of biblical material of the uh, of the Judeo-Christian story um, or, or stories whatever. Um, and I said at the time that, that we have our own affirmative values. That really wasn't how we were going to go about it. And it didn't matter. You saw the activity book we put out was pro-social. There was nothing objectionable about no, it other than that it was the Satanic it was Temple. All right? benign. And it still caused a complete meltdown. But although whole... I thought that the graphics were very, uh, they, they were interesting. You're, you're missing one in the, uh, <laughs> in the interplay between the Satanic Temple and the Freedom From Religion Foundation, though. It was also the, uh, the Freedom From Religion Foundation that reached out to us about the monument in Belle Plain, the yes, Veterans right. Memorial. Be Belle Plain, Minnesota. Minnesota. And, right, and we were approved to put up that monument. Um, I mean, to their credit, they realized that they, they didn't have a legal case to keep us out of the open forum. Uh, but then after we built the monument, they decided to shut down the forum after a good deal of complaints from the archdiocese and Catholics. But the most comical part of that whole fiasco was that uh, a pastor, uh, Pastor Brian Lynch from the archdiocese, claimed that uh, if our monument were to go on these grounds, it could lead to the molestation of children. And he, <laughs> this was a yeah, right, irony. Objective oh inversion is what I we call it. Right? Yeah. Um, and that was uh, At first involving... we weren't sure if it was a threat coming from him. Yeah, but well, from we... the church. The church ought to speak about those things. That involved a, uh, a monument, a Christian monument that was on public land as a, a veterans memorial. And of course, we've always pointed out there are many atheists and foxholes and agnostics and other non-believers and when uh, we complained about it then they turned it into a public forum and you jumped in with okay let's put up a well the alliance defending freedom uh, or alliance defense fund they changed their name at some point no, and i don't alliance remember defending right. freedom, though. they jumped in at some point so then then this narrative uh the the anti-non-believer narrative became that the satanic temple from outside from from salem was coming into this small town the freedom from religion foundation was coming from outside to beat up on this small town but uh in actuality everybody was coming from the outside the catholic organizations they flew people in to uh to protest and the alliance uh, defending freedom is based in arizona the alliance defending freedom flew a lawyer in to start talking at one of the city council meetings and they, they had uh they 
originally had reserved all their scorn for the FFRF. I, I and they transferred it to Satanic right, Temple. Right. But they, they thought it was very clever that they were opening up the, the public grounds as a limited public forum for veterans' monuments. And they felt that this was really the way to undermine the FFRF. And, and of course, I should hasten to explain that we only get involved because somebody local knows about this violation and contacts us. So we were representing members and members of the public in Belle Plaine, Minnesota, when we complained, including a veteran. So, uh, of course, this is... Um, n not outside interference at all. But we should also point out that we really don't want our monument there in the first place. We were using it to fight fire with fire. Now, I don't know how as you As long feel. as we're pointing things out, yeah. I, I would like to point out that we get a lot of support from veterans, uh, especially uh, older veterans from foreign wars. They're usually the first to speak out in our defense. Um, I think they've They've been around the world. They see how much better it is to live in a pluralistic society rather than have the imposition of some kind of theocracy. And they, they see exactly what we're doing and why. And we do have a lot of people in active service within the Satanic Temple. So it wasn't just that we wanted to make a point about right. separation of church and state. We also did want to put something out that would recognize veterans who identify with us. Now, I should uh, ask, it's called the Satanic Temple. You're an atheist. You don't believe in the supernatural. Ergo, you do not believe in Satan. Correct, right. There's no real, I and mean, we should make it very clear that you, we do not believe that there is a devil or a Satan. Right. This is a supernatural concept coming from the Bible. Yeah, but you, you, I, see, uh, I see talks uh, from people speculating about the future of religion. And recently, Daniel Dennett was talking about the clergy project, non-believers within their religious communities who still are part of the community, the culture, and things like that. I Which really, Dan is a co-founder of. Right, right. I really think that that's the, the future of religious identification. I think that's a good thing. When I hear people in the sciences say, we're not going to get away from religion. Well, which parts of it aren't we going to get away from? I think we can step away from superstition. We can stop having people being made to believe that in order to identify with their ethics and their, their culture and everything else that they need to, uh, they need to at least pretend that they believe these things that are, are patently false or intellectually insulting. And I think as time goes on, we're going to find a lot more. I mean, you see a lot of secular Jews now, uh, people who are willing to engage in Jewish practices, rituals, well, whatever else. Uh, we just had a meeting here at Freethought Hall where one of our members got up and said, when you see somebody who says they're um, a member of Reformed Ju Juda Judaism, they're all atheists. You oh, know? Well, well, the joke was, what do you call uh, oh, a Jew who doesn't believe in God? Oh, that's right. A Jew. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Which was, so although, it, although there are Jews who believe in yeah, God. Yeah, of course there are. Uh, so. Um, Satanic Temple is a religion? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, well, I'm, people debate the semantics of that, but uh, we'll, we'll take the, the argument as far as it can go. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's more than just a, a clever little legalistic ploy. I think it, it's part of everything that we're doing to kind of try to uphold enlightenment values and, obtain, and uphold the kind of uh, secular democratic principles that we were founded upon, I think you need to recognize that people's deeply held beliefs are no less deeply held if they don't have a belief in a supernatural being overseeing their activities. Well, I know that in the 19th century, Robert Ingersoll and Elizabeth Cady Stanton used to write about the religion of humanity, which might be kind of what Daniel Dennett was getting at. What are the seven principles of the Satanic Temple? Well they're, they're, well, they're very broad and humanistic. The ones that come into play with our lawsuits the most uh, are the third one, that the body is inviolable subject to one's own will alone. And we also have a tenant that states that we should defer to science as the arbiter of truth claims. And, we sh and further, that we should be able to revise our, our, our opinions based on the best available evidence at the time. Um, and those run into conflict now, uh, as basic as you think those things might be. Uh, we find those being uh, directly confronted by new legislation, particularly in the, uh, in the anti-abortion war, the efforts to overturn Roe versus Wade, the efforts to pass legislation to make abortion more and more difficult or prohibitive for, for women to get. And aren't you involved in, in an abortion um 
is it litigation right now or? Yeah, yeah, we have three uh, three lawsuits in play right now in Missouri. They just all happen to be in Missouri with two separate plaintiffs. Uh, one one plaintiff has two lawsuits at the state and federal level, and we have a new plaintiff that just signed on. And what we were doing is we were offering exemption to members of the Satanic Temple who are pregnant looking to terminate uh, their pregnancy, exemption from what they call informed consent laws over there. And the informed consent laws require that um, the woman receives a state-mandated material that claims life begins at conception and abortion will murder an individual unique human being. We say that those are arguable positions and uh, they completely, are. yeah, <laughs> and that they they uh, they conflict with our own religion. O- o- yeah, our own beliefs upon uh, upon what abortion is based upon our deference to our religious values. So we feel that we fall under religious protection. That went to the state Supreme Court and it's still being uh, deliberated on now. Ruling hasn't come through. It's it's difficult to know which way they'll rule. I think we have much stronger cases. I mean, I, I believe that's a strong case, but you never know which way you're gonna, it's gonna well, go. Well, state Supreme Courts are often very conservative. Right, we're, we're gearing up to sue Arkansas for putting up a Ten Commandments monument on their Capitol grounds, which they will call a, a limited public forum while denying our monument, uh, which, fell within the same, mm-hmm. at least, structural parameters well, and everything else. We're gearing else. up to sue Arkansas, too. <laughs> On the same, same well, issue? Well, a slightly different, but same um, issue. That one, I think, would be hard for us to lose, even if a judge were inclined to rule against us by whatever means necessary, uh, just because the way Arkansas has gone about it has been so, so ignorant. And, and they've... And the senator who sponsored the uh, Ten Commandments bill and helped finance it and put it up and everything else has been very open about the mission being one of bringing religion into the public square, bringing gospel values, uh, and and really openly railing against the First Amendment. Well, the First Amendment is the antithesis of the First Commandment, telling people what God they have to worship and what's going to happen to them if they don't worship the right God is hardly well. That's, in that's one of the greatest insults of the uh, of the Ten Commandments debate. Uh, the idea, supposedly, being put forward in these Ten Commandments bills, which is model legislation, obviously going going across the nation, is is that uh, somehow the Ten Commandments informed our constitutional values, and they're, they're directly oppose and conflict. Of course, and and we have a godless constitution, and maybe those legislators who took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution ought to try to read it someday. No God, no Ten Commandments in it. Well, even then they ought to read the Bible, too. (laughs) Reading the Bible turns a lot of people into atheists because that God character is responsible for thousands or maybe 20 million deaths. And how many deaths is Satan responsible for in the Bible? I believe it was 10. 10, yeah. Yeah. And even those 10 were at the permission of God who told Satan he could kill Job's 10 children. So Satan couldn't even do it without permission from this other character. And of course we are speaking about fictional characters, but um, I also wanted to ask, is the Satanic Temple involved in doing invocations? Um, oh you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Take... Well, so speaking of lawsuits, we have one uh, we filed in Scottsdale um, just recently. Mm-hmm. In Scottsdale, it's, it's hard to figure out how we could lose that case as well. Again, you never know, and e- even with uh, the first lawsuit we filed in Missouri, uh, the first federal lawsuit before it went to the state Supreme Court, uh, the judge waited over nine months and then decided that the case was moot because she couldn't be pregnant anymore. So you well, you run into those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, wow, that, that was even addressed by Roe versus Wade. Right, you know, right, um, and, right. The they, the idea of, uh, of capable of, of repetition. Yes, but or, indefinitely. Right, right. <clears throat> um, so, Tell us more about the Scottsdale, what happened in Scottsdale. Our Arizona chapter applied to give an invocation preceding a city council meeting. Um, Greece v. Galloway uh, went to the Supreme Court, uh, town of Greece in, in New York, uh, wanted to do their prayers before their city council meetings. Uh, somebody complained, said it was a, an establishment clause issue, and the Supreme Court decided that you could have religious invocations before your city council meetings, but they did specify that you, they, the city council itself, the, the state government, need to remain uh, viewpoint neutral. Non-believers could give these invocations as well. 
Uh, that part seems to have completely gone over the heads of most of these, these municipalities that, that have the invocations at all. So they feel uh, completely at liberty to only have uh, Judeo-Christian invocations. And in Scottsdale, uh, the Satanic Temple offered to give an invocation, which I think needed to be limited to 250 words, a minute and a half, something really brief. Uh, overall, those prayers aren't, aren't terribly long, but, uh, but if you're in a community where one religious voice is, is, in, is exclusively uh, co-opting what appears what appears to be co-opting the power and the authority of the government by standing up there and opening the proceedings every time, uh, it's very meaningful to have the alternative religious group come in and deliver the invocation. Well, this was altogether too much, again, of course, and, and there was a near meltdown, and, and then after having approved the invocation, some press started rolling in, and then they said they couldn't have this at all. Um, and they gave the excuse that we had no substantial community ties with Scottsdale. Well, that wasn't a pre-existing standard mm -hmm. to begin with. They didn't ask us what our community ties were. Turns out we do have membership in Scottsdale. How much membership do we need? They had no metrics. They, they just made this rule up yeah. after the fact. And then, stupidly, the, uh, the mayor, running for re-election at that time, used that as part of his, part of his platform, as part of his... Uh, and a list of accomplishments during his, his term on, on propaganda he had sent out to, uh, to voters in his area. He listed keeping the Satanic Temple from doing the invocation as one of his achievements in, in office. And we also did a Freedom of Information Act request for uh, internal discussions that, that may have been uh, saved, emails or whatever else, related to our invocation request. And we had uh, I mean, you can find these online, uh, but there were some real classics. One of the city council members said that uh, us giving the invocation would be equality gone too far, which kind of... <laughs> equality gone too yeah, far. right. Uh. So equality is kind of an immovable line, <laughs> so it makes you wonder some, about... Some some people are more equal than others, so it's very animal farmish there, isn't it? Right, exactly. So the general principle here is that our secular government should not be picking sides. This religion is the in-group and this religion isn't. And if, it, if all religions are on the equal playing field, then you and any other group that wants to call, and even non-religious people, are just as welcome in these forums. And that's the way it should be. I, I don't necessarily feel that people shouldn't be able to make an argument from, from their conscience about whether they should be uh, mandated to do certain things or be engaged in certain things that, that the government imposes upon them unless the government can prove some kind of uh, some kind of real deep necessity for those kinds of things. Maybe people should be able to make those, those religious arguments, but where that becomes corrupted is if that viewpoint neutrality isn't engaged in by, by the officiating bodies. Uh, we all have a stake in the government, I think, being neutral insofar as viewpoint is concerned. And we often get that complaint, if we really believe in secularism, why are we trying to put up monuments at all? And we've been very clear that we never open that door. We, once that door is open and people try to establish having a religious monument on public grounds, the least we can do is ensure that viewpoint neutrality is still being respected. And may I say amen, and mm -hmm. that is exactly what is true for the Freedom From Religion Foundation. We never come in and say we want to put our Bill of Rights Nativity up in a state capitol or um, county courthouse until there's already a nativity scene, religion there. And we're there. both called bullies, aren't we? Right. Yeah. It, I mean, we just want, if, if they're going to have religion uh, in a governmental building, and if we can't get rid of that religion, then we're going to be there too. It's and a good way to test their sincerity. If they're really saying it's open to everyone, well, let's see if you really mean that. So, right. Uh, and, and we really have nothing on our side except for the U.S. Constitution and, mm -hmm. and legal yeah. precedent. Uh, we're, we're outfinanced, we're outnumbered. Uh, look at an organization like the ADF as opposed to the Satanic right. Temple. Right? Which is we, what is the $38 million a year budget or something. Right. Uh, enormous to try to entangle religion and government. Does the Satanic Temple have a guiding motto or other principles that we haven't discussed? Well, my own kind of personal philosophy of all this is when I play around, I don't play around. Yeah. So, or when you muck around, you don't muck around. You, you, you take it seriously. 
yeah. it, put in whatever word you like. <laughs> but yeah, you get the point. Yeah. So, Lucian, are you are you a full time volunteer, or um, you mean do you have a day job? Oh, this has destroyed my life. Yeah, no, this <laughs> this is all all I can do at this point. It, it's not it's not terribly lucrative, but it is fulfilling. Um, I, I think it it. Uh, it decreased my life life expectancy by by quite a bit, but the more time goes on and and uh, the the less I get killed, hmm. I think the better my odds are of of going much further still. Well, we are in complete agreement with you on the need to keep state and church separate and to have equality for those of us who are non-believers. So um, it's um, really been a trip uh, watching the Satanic Temple and all you've accomplished and. Um, I'm delighted to finally meet you in person, and thank you for joining us today. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters.